All right, welcome to the Bears Hall of Discipline today. We're in 1 Kings chapter 2. It's a little bit brutal. Bible doesn't agree with it, disagree with it, it just tells you the facts. And uh, last time uh, we talked about David and the consequences of his past just keep trickling on down through the family and the house. Um, and I don't know if you can hear, but our mascot, Canute, over here is making himself a nice bread in the spreading I put out for him. A little bed. He's hoping for some bread. So you're going to hear him rustling around back there like a 240-pound rat. But he is our sweet companion, so... We're going to tolerate it. And with that, 1 Kings chapter 2. Now the days of David, the king, drew nigh, that he should die. And he charged his son Solomon, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself, that the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way to walk before me, in truth, with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee a man on the throne of Israel. Well, those of us that have read through the Bible many times, we see that his lineage falls far short of that. And may I add, as do we all. We come to Christ and repentance. Repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Cling tightly to it with all your heart. And if you fall, get up. And if there's consequences, try and even out the score if you can. But if there's consequences, there's consequences. You can't escape that. You just live with that. May that be a warning to you and to us the next time. Next time you're at a crossroads and you fall short of the mark. May it be a reminder of you, the consequences. David's consequences way back in the time with Bathsheba and Uriah and all that. Yeah, he was a man after God's heart because he came to the Son of God, as we all do. But when we fall short and we do evil, sin, transgressions, and we come before the Lord broken and contrite, He will forgive us. But that stack of consequences gets higher and higher. So don't get to that place. But realize we have a sin nature and we got to fight it. Until we're flying through the air in the rapture of the church, or you pass on through the normal gray gates of this life. Because we don't know. But be ready. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning, ready to go. So David's giving his exhortation to Solomon. Verse 4. May the Lord continue his word which he spake concerning me. His lineage and his offspring did wind up on the throne. But sometimes it was a little rough going. We'll get to that. We'll get to that later. Moreover, thou knowest also what Joab the son of Zariah did unto me. 
David has confusion in his life, but he's still the king. He can still give orders and directives. And what he did to the two captains of the host of Israel, and Abner the son of Ner, unto Amasa the son of Jather, whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace, and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins, and his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to thy wisdom, and let not his head go down to the grave in peace. But show kindness unto the sons of Barzillai the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at thy table, for so they came to me when I fled because of Absalom thy brother. And behold, thou hast with thee Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamin of Bahurim, which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went down to Mahanam. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put thee to death with the sword. Well, he kind of didn't let that go, did he? I won't put thee to death, because the guy came and entreated to him to have mercy. He didn't quite just let him go, did he? He passed on the guilt to his son. Now you carry out the, you know, the dirty deed done dirt cheap, okay? A little bit brutal, okay? But he's in his end. He can kind of feel it, you know? He wants to get that last little bit of, you know, catch up revenge. And once again, that's at some point in time in the life of David, he walked the road of greatness, protecting sheep, taking down Goliath, great victories against nations. Now he's feeling a little bit weak and he's rethinking all of this. He's letting the sword will not depart from your house. He's passing it on to his son. Good, bad, or ugly. Bible doesn't say yay, nay. Just telling us the truth. And I like that. I'd rather have the truth than what we get now from the news media and politics. They just, they feed smoke out. They put smoke on the water and hope we swallow it. Because it's, it's the time of the end. Where Isaiah says, Jeremiah says, all the prophets, the minor prophets. And the end of the days, the end of the time, end of the earth, end of the man's age. They're going to start twisting what's good and make it sound bad. And make what's evil and wrong, they're going to make it sound good. So I like the Bible. It tells it like it is. If we do wrong, if you do wrong, tell it like it is. Yep, it was me. I did it. I was wrong. I repent. I'm sorry. I accept the consequence. If you cheat on your wife, or you're a wife, and you cheat on your husband, go to him, tell him, put it on the table, I cheated on you. May the chips fall where they may. Get it off your chest. Don't let skeletons hang in your closet. Get yourself free. Jesus said, if you abide in my word and you're truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now therefore, hold him not guiltless, for thou art a wise man and knowest what thou oughtest to do unto him. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. All in all, you got to put on his memorandum, he was a good king and he was a good man. You don't need to put in there he wasn't perfect because none of us are, right? None of us are perfect. We've done stupid things, we regret, we wish we could go back and change them. But you can't. That's history, right? 
you can't change it. You just got to tell it like it is and move on and do better next time. The days of David reigning over Israel were 40 years. Seven years in Hebron and 33 in Jerusalem. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David, his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. And Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. Now here we go. The sword will not depart from your house. Guess what? Still ain't departed from his house because his house is still living. All his sons, his daughters, and there's going to be chaos still, controversy. And at first, Solomon's a good king, very wise, did very wise things. Towards the end of his rule and reign, things got, once again, a little bit fuzzy, a little bit hairy. So now we got a little bit of drama and intrigue coming here. One of his brothers comes. Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. She says to him, Do you come peacefully? He said, Moreover, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And she said, Say on. He said, Thou knowest that the kingdom was mine, that all Israel set their faces on me that I should reign. Howbeit, the kingdom has turned about and has become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. And now, I ask one petition of thee, deny me not. She said unto him, Say on. He said, Speak, I pray thee, unto Solomon the king, for he will not say thee nay, that he give me Abishag the Shunammite to be a wife. And Bathsheba said, Well, I will speak for thee unto the king. Bathsheba therefore went unto king Solomon to speak unto him, for Adonijah and the king rose up to meet her. So she's going to come and visit with the king. So, the king rose up, bowed himself to his mother, sat back down on the throne, caused a seat to be set for his mom, and she sat at his right hand. Then she said, I desire one small petition of thee, Solomon. I pray thee, say me not nay. And the king said unto her, Ask on. She said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah thy brother as a wife. Now this is the woman that they brought and kept King David warm when he was an old man in bed and he couldn't keep warm. Why they didn't build a fire for him and move her or move him to a place where they had a nice, you know, hearth with a, a you know, wood wood fire burning or something, I don't know, but they brought a woman who was a virgin and she lay next to him. And the Bible says they didn't have relations, but her body warmth kept him warm. And he at least helped. King Solomon was angry and said unto his mother, why dost thou ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask him for the kingdom also, for he is mine elder brother, even for him and for Abiathar the priest and for Joab the son of Zariah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, God do so to me and more also, if the Adonijah hath not spoken this word against his own life. So, like the kings and queens in England and many other nations around the world, Germany, Russia, first, certainly, you know, they, they got rid of the czars. They just went out on a headhunt and got rid of them all and seized their monies. And we're going to see this happening. Now, therefore, the Lord liveth, which hath established me, and set me on the throne of David my father, who hath made me a house, as he promised. Adonijah shall be put to death his day. Now, we're talking about his brother here. Same dad different mother but his brother his blood brother gonna put him to death bizarre but like I said the Bible is just telling us like it is 
King Solomon sent by the hand of Benaiah the son of Jehoiada and fell upon him that he died. So that's first execution. Now there's going to be more to come. And unto Abiathar the priest said the king, Get thee to Anathoth unto thine own fields, for thou art worthy of death, but I will not at this time put thee to death, because thou bearest the ark of the Lord God before David my father, because thou hast been afflicted in all wherein my father was afflicted. Yeah, that's putting it mildly. It wouldn't have been for these guys supporting David. David didn't have much support. But once again, there's been a, a change at the helm of the kingdom. So Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being priest that he might fulfill the word of the Lord which he spake concerning the house of Eli and Shiloh. Then tidings came to Joab, for Joab had turned after Adonijah, though he turned not after Absalom. And Joab fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord, caught hold of the horns of the altar. And it was told King Solomon that Joab was fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord, and behold, he is by the altar. Then Solomon sent Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go fall upon him. Tragic. It, you got to tell it like it is. That's tragic. If it wouldn't have been for Joab, on many occasions, David would have had no support. And Joab rescued him. Tragic. He forgot. He forgot the great things that Joab did for his father. But, like I said, there's the sword will not depart from thy house. That's what the Lord told David. And it continues on. It just utter chaos for a while. Though Solomon was very wise. The Bible makes it very clear. God gave him great wisdom despite all his conduct later on in his reign as a king. But some of this is tragic. But that's the way it was. And Benaiah came to the tabernacle of the Lord and said unto him, Thus saith the king, Come forth. And he said, Nay, but I will die here. And, and Benaiah brought the king word, saying, Thus says Joab. The king said unto him, Do as he hath said, and fall upon him, and bury him, that thou must, mayest take away the blood which Joab shed from me from the house of of my father and the Lord shall return his blood upon his own head who fell upon two men more righteous and better than he and slew them with a sword my father David not knowing therewith Abner the son of Ner captain of the host of Israel and Amasa the son of Jether captain of the host of Judah their blood shall therefore return upon the head of Joab and upon the head of his offspring always but upon David and upon his seed and upon his house and upon his throne shall there be peace always from the Lord. Well, that's not quite true because that's not what you will see happen as we read a little bit later on. But that's what they hope for. So Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, went up, fell upon him, slew him, and he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. As I said, some of this is kind of brutal. It's, it's, way, it's the way it was. And the king put Benaiah the son of Jehoiada in his room over the host. And Zadok the priest did the king put in the room of Abiathar. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Build thee a house in Jerusalem and dwell there and go not forth thence any whither. For it shall be that on the day that thou goest out and passest over the brook Kidron, Thou shalt know for certain thy blood will be upon thine own head. Shimei said unto the king, The saying is good. So Shimei said, Thank you, thank you, thank you, you know, for not executing me. But later on a little blindness happens to him, and, and we'll see that happen. So Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem many days. And it came to pass at the end of three years that two of the servants of Shimei ran away to Achish, son of Micah, king of Gath. They told Shimei, saying, Behold, thy servants are in Gath. Shimei arose, saddled his donkey, went to Gath, to Achish, 
to seek his servants. He should have let them servants go. And he went and brought his servants from Gath. And it was told Solomon, guess who left Jerusalem? The king sent and called Shimei, said, Did I not tell thee you cannot leave Jerusalem? The day you do, you shall die. Thou saidst unto me the word that I have said is good. Why hast thou disobeyed my words? The king said, Moreover to Shimei, Thou knowest all the wickedness which was in thine heart. Therefore thy wickedness shall return upon thine head. King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be blessed. So the king commanded Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, which went out, fell upon him, and executed him. And the king's kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. So, demonstration of power, very important in that day, to make sure that people see he is a strong king, and he is going to stand by his, his father's words and the laws of the land. And hopefully that he will keep it too. So there's a there's a there's a power thrust here to let people know King Solomon's the king, he is the king, he has his throne, he respects his mother, those that he believed were evil will be executed, so forth and so on. So some of this is kind of hard to read, but you know you gotta read it as part of history, good, bad, or ugly. Some of this we won't really even know until we get to heaven. By them, probably we won't, we won't even know or remember our questions. But this went on. The Bible records it. So in some way, shape, or form, it's good for us to learn from us. If you say you let a sin go, then let it go. Don't keep holding on to the grudge and have your children and grandchildren carry on the grudge. Let it go. Either, either make a judgment or let it go because that's what the Lord would want you to do forgive or don't but if you forgive let go okay first Kings chapter 2 very interesting the sad ending of the reign of David all in all um, reading through the history of David, he will go down in Christendom as a good king. And his son Solomon now picks up the baton, of the rulership of the kingdom of Israel. They are still one nation. And as we read on, we will see how Solomon cares for God's kingdom. So with that, from the Bears Hall of Discipline, God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, if we've learned anything from this today, repent and believe the gospel. We want that from the Lord. We've done sin, many sins, all of us have sinned. And we want to be forgiven. We want it to be let go. We want to believe in the truth and follow on. If somebody comes to you and repents, then it's time to forgive for them too. Apples for apples. As you want to be forgiven, forgive them. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I bid you Godspeed this week and many blessings in the Holy Spirit unto our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Amen. See you next time, brothers and sisters.